Hello, in this video we are going to talk about the atmospheric water generators or AWG and in particular the ones that can be powered up by solar energy. These are machines that can capture water present in the air in the form of moisture. It should be understood that even in the driest of places the humidity level is never zero and hence some amount of water is present in the air. The atmospheric water generators have the ability to tap into that. We will cover very interesting and unique technologies that are helping to combat the growing water scarcity around the world. The energy source for running these generators can be electricity, heat or even light wind. Water is the juice of life that is essential to our existence. Fresh water scarcity is growing day by day. We have seen cities like Karachi, Bangalore, Jakarta, Cairo and Cape Town witnessing acute water shortage over the last decade. For now, water transportation has provided some relief, but within a decade, it is believed that 50% of the world's population will live in areas without access to clean, fresh and safe drinking water. Interestingly, many of the water strained areas are coastal. This means that they have high humidity levels for most part of the year. For example, in Karachi, the annual average relative humidity level remains above 75%. In the last decade, research in atmospheric water generators have made significant strides. We now have machines that are very efficient at producing water for a very little amount of energy input. For example, there are some machines in the market that require only 310 watt hour of electricity to create a liter of water. Meaning for one unit of electricity, we can get 3.22 liters of drinking water. This figure is for 60% relative humidity and 27 degrees centigrade. There are multiple advantages of using atmospheric water generators. For example, no transportation of water is needed, no plumbing infrastructure is required, and even the need of plastic bottles for carrying water is eliminated. And this technology has been shrunk down to a level where it can fit into cars or boats very easily. And when linked with solar energy, the running costs are very low. The AWG differs from home dehumidifiers in that the AWG have additional features inside them to keep the water drinkable which the home dehumidifiers don't have. These include mineralization and decontamination devices like UV light to eliminate pathogens. Contrary to the popular belief, people have been devising different apparatus for harnessing water present in the air for a very long time. For instance, the Incas were able to channel water from the condensed dew and were able to sustain themselves despite living above the rain line. Similarly, in France, wells can be found that are more than 100 years old. And likewise, fog collectors called Atrapeniables can be found in Chile. So, let's now look at various technologies available to us for creating water out of air. The modern AWGs can be categorized into four types based on their technology. The first ones are the refrigerant or vapor compression based AWGs. The second one are Peltier effect based AWGs. The third one rely on thermal desiccation. And the fourth one are the hydrophilic condensation AWGs. The first two cooling condensation techniques, namely the refrigerant and Peltier, require electricity as an input. Although vapor absorption cycle can also be used which would require heat as an input but no such device can be readily bought. The fundamental idea of the first two techniques is the same which is to cool the air below its dew point. The vapor in this air is deposited over surfaces and is collected. Most of the AWGs in the market make use of vapor compression for recovering water. The use of electricity allows a degree of control and consistency in the output. The Peltier effect based AWGs on the other hand are very low efficiency but are simple in design and do not require any maintenance whereas vapor compression AWGs require replacement of compressors every now and then. It has to be mentioned here that even though there are several companies producing AWGs only few of them have reached the level of 300 to 350 watt hour of energy per liter. One of them is WaterGen. Its patented technology uses energy exchange very efficiently to maximize water condensation present in the air. They use an air-to-air -air heat exchanger between the incoming air and the outgoing air. 
The reason is that in such system, air is cooled below its dew point, so the byproduct of this process is cold air that leaves the system. If this cold air that has already shed its moisture content is allowed to exchange heat with the incoming air, then it pre-cools the incoming air. Therefore, by the time the moist inlet air reaches the very cold refrigerated core, it readily sheds the water and more air can be cycled through the system. This produces more water for the same amount of energy. As for the Peltier type AWGs, they are easy to design and can be made at home. They do require thermoelectric generators which are easily available from hardware and online stores. Similarly, the plans for making Peltier AWGs are available on the internet, even though they are not as powerful in generating water compared to their refrigeration system counterparts. They nonetheless are easy enough to produce and install, particularly in disaster stuck areas. Note that solar panels can be used to make the above mentioned AWGs completely grid independent and therefore can be installed in any location. And most manufacturers selling these types of AWGs also sell them with solar options. The third type of atmospheric water generator is the thermal desiccant system. The advantage with them is that instead of converting sun's energy to electricity, it can efficiently use heat produced by the sunlight to achieve the process of extracting water from air. Only a small amount of electricity is required to run a fan to circulate the air. The second advantage is that the yield for this system is higher because hot air can hold much more water than cold air. This system requires a three-step process. First, air is blown through a container that has silica gel beads during the night. The beads soak up the moisture from the air. Note that relative humidity is higher at nighttime. During the daytime, the solar collector heats up the air. This hot air is passed through the water-rich silica gel beads. As the beads get hot, they release the moisture content which is picked up by the hot air. Now, it is much easier to condense hot air carrying large amount of water compared to air at normal temperature. This is because hot humid air can be condensed even at normal ambient temperature. As the hot air interacts with membrane at ambient temperature, its vapor condenses which is then collected. It is claimed that such a system will produce water at less than 5 cents per liter and even cheaper if it's operated at a large scale utilizing waste heat. The final type of atmospheric water generator requires the use of nanotechnology and was inspired by the Namib desert beetle that lives in one of the most arid regions in the world and is able to survive by accumulating water from the air and fog. It does this through the use of hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces in tandem. The hydrophilic surfaces attract water from the air while the hydrophobic surface channels that water to one place by using the action of gravity. A large water droplet is formed which then drops due to its own weight. Surfaces based on similar principle have been designed by scientists from MIT. By creating these graduated surfaces, scientists have invented something that not only collects water but is able to help in a variety of applications including DNA screening, microfluidic devices and as a self-decontaminating surface that could channel and collect harmful substances. The device consists of a fence-like mesh panel with both hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces which attracts droplets connected to the receptacles into which the water drips. This is the cheapest way of harnessing water from the atmosphere so far. So these were the four technologies by which we can extract water from air. Till now, the approach has been to look at water transportation, purification or desalination before considering the use of AWGs. With more companies and more devices based on novel techniques coming into the market, the cost of atmospheric water generators is coming down while their effectiveness is improving. We hope their use would extend as it not only gives autonomy of water supply, which is every human's fundamental right, but will also help in reducing the menace of plastic waste. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you.